Hey booktube, it's Greg from Coffee Slash Books. Today I want to talk about The Emissary by Yoko Tawada. Um, this book I picked up when I was just in a bookshop, I think once quarantine finally opened up and I could go somewhere. <laughs> um, it is translated from Japanese by Margaret Mitsutani. Um, it's not a long book, it is 130 pages. Um, I think it was released in Japan in like 2014 and maybe it was only translated into the, the current English version maybe two years ago or last year, so 2018. So it is fairly new, there's four years between when it was published in Japan and when um, it came out in the US. I think it's a very interesting title to say The Emissary. The other translation, maybe it's how it's translated in the UK, is The Last Children of Tokyo, which that title I actually like more because it's more descriptive of what the story is about. Um, you'll see it's a cute little drawing of a boy dancing on an orange. I guess that's how you would say that, dancing on an orange. Um, which I think is a very interesting choice for the artwork for this cover because the story itself is um, pretty dark and apocalyptic, literally. Um, so it was an interesting choice to choose that. It was the National Book Award winner. I don't know any details about that. But I think if I remember correctly, um, the author actually like lives and works in Berlin. And she writes a lot, she's Japanese, but she writes a lot of her um, works in German too. So I thought that was interesting to know. So this story um, probably is the best thing I've read in 2020 so far. And I've read a lot during quarantine. I very much enjoyed it. I think I read it all in one evening. Um, the translator did an excellent job. I mean, I'm not saying Japanese is difficult to translate, but um, I think sometimes a lot of concepts from Japanese culture and literature are hard to translate for or localize for a Western audience. For example, like anyone who's read, you know, the what is it, Marie Kondo's Tidying Up books, which of course I read and I love her. Um, I think a lot of those concepts that are culturally acceptable and make sense to a Japanese reader about, you know, things having spiritual possession, um, those kind of things. Like when w Americans read them, like Psh, this is crazy. Like what is she talking about? I think it's I think it's just a cultural thing. Um, so I thought the translation of this was excellent. I felt like it was actually written in like a beautiful poetic like native English by a native English writer. So um, anyway, so what it's about? It's about a a guy who's over 100 years old. Um, can't remember his name, even though I friggin' already just read it. Uh, ch -ch -ch Yoshiro, he's a great-grandfather to his great-grandson, uh, Mumei, who's in second grade. And what it's about, it's about a kind of a post-apocalyptic world in Japan and in the world from a man-made um, devastating event, which we're not told exactly what this man-made event was, but I think it's kind of alluded to a nuclear disaster, which has echoing undertones from the Fukushima disaster in March 2011. Um, it kind of has that, like it could have gone that way mentality, um, but without the author explicitly saying that. Um, so anyway, it's about this post, it is about like an apocalyptic world in Japan where um, something's wrong with the children. All the adults get older and older and they're healthy. You know, he's a hundred years old, he's physically fit, he takes care of everything, lives on his own. But the younger generations, because of this event and contamination, radiation, whatever you want to call it, they're literally dying out. So the children um, are extremely unhealthy. They can barely walk. Their teeth get soft. Um, they can't eat a lot of different foods. Um, they're tired all the time. Like they're literally just, just living and dying. Um, and one interesting thing is they, they change their biological sex. So they go from female to male or male to female when they become like adolescents. And that's also like a mystery. So um, it's basically about this great grandfather taking care of his great grandson um, and viewing him from this view of like this this thing happened and changed the country. Um, it's also some interesting things to note. Um, Japan decides to close itself off from the rest of the world because of this event. Um, and they also ban the use of like foreign words or words that were used before they close themselves off because they, they kind of like criminalize it and they want people just to, to stay within Japan. Um, and I and also the they describe how um, the islands of Japan like floated out farther into the Pacific because of this event, whether it's seismic or nuclear, whatever it is. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Um, and basically what it is, is there's an underground group of adults 
were trying to send their children out of Japan to be studied by scientists to figure out what's wrong with them. So the reason why it's emissary is because eventually um, Mumei, the little boy, um, secretly gets sent out of Japan to be go to go and be tested or explored, whatever the scientists want to do to try to figure out what happened. Um, and that's why it comes from the term emissary. But it's very interesting to read this kind of storyline in Tokyo. For example, you know, they talk about how different regions of Japan are totally different. There's some allusions to kind of like modern slavery because fruit and vegetables and things can't grow like they used to. So people like in the southern islands of Japan are able to grow fruit and they do this thing where they only let certain people come to those islands because they can be able to re reproduce. Um, just very interesting. And it's funny that you can kind of pack all these things and these emotions into 130 pages. So I thought that was interesting as well. But anyway, this is The Emissary by Yoga Tawada. In a 2020 world, it seems very interesting to read this. Kind of reminds you of what's important in life and that really anything can change overnight into something even worse than what we're dealing with now. So kind of puts things in, into perspective. So um, thanks for watching and I hope wherever you are, you are safe and healthy and take care of yourselves. Bye.